You're watching FE Exam Prep with Anthony Fasano from Pass the FE Exam. In this video, I'm going to solve an ethics question similar to the one that you might encounter during the FE Exam in the Ethics and Professional Practice category. This Pass the FE Exam and question is brought to you by PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams since 1975. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the FE exam the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. With study guides, practice exams, and more, the PPI Learning Hub offers digital practice and review that you can take with you anywhere you have a device so that you can prepare during the times most convenient for you. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for FE exam prep. Let's dive in. Why may it be difficult to apply codes of ethics to real-world situations? Let's look at the answers. A, the codes are too idealized for real-world situations. B, since few people follow such codes, doing so would put one at a great disadvantage. C, corporations are profit-oriented and frown upon anything that may affect their bottom line. Or D, sections of the code are vague, or conflict with other sections. So those are your four options. Now, this type of a question, you could probably answer just using practical knowledge, common sense, right? Just by thinking through each option. So we'll do that in a minute and we'll try to arrive at the answer. However, we don't want to rely on that. So I'm also going to show you where you can find this answer in the FE reference handbook. So first of all, let's Kind of talk through each option here and just think it out from a common sense standpoint for someone who's you know not necessarily a practicing engineer. First of all, A, the codes are too idealized for real world situations. I don't think that an examination board would say something like that, first of all. Second of all, I would hope that they're not crafting codes that are too idealized for real world situations because that would be pointless. So I highly doubt that's the answer. B, since few people follow such codes, doing so would put one at a great disadvantage. Why would the, again, why would the board promote something with saying that such few people follow these codes, which is just likely something that's completely not true. I, at least that's what I hope. And that's my knowledge from talking with many engineers. So I would also think that that's not the answer. And then C, corporations are profit oriented and frown upon anything that may affect their bottom line. Now, I would think that corporations are profit oriented. That's how corporations grow by earning profits, but that doesn't mean that they're going to look the other way on ethical matters. In fact, there are laws against that. So I highly doubt that that's an option as well, which leaves us with D. Sections of the code are vague or conflict with other sections. I could totally see that happening. You know, codes are sometimes long, there's lots of text in them. So I would guess that the answer is D, if it were me, of these four answers. That would be my guess. And the answer actually is D. The difficulty arises when sections of the code conflict, such as when the obligation to one's employer conflicts with one's obligation to society, right? So there can be conflicts in the code. Now, maybe you, as a student, if you're still an engineering student, maybe you wouldn't be able to think through those like I just did. So how would you answer it? You're going to open up your FE reference handbook and you're going to search for the word ethics. And when you do that, it's going to bring you to a page on ethics that's a lot of text about ethics, paragraphs on ethics, definitions, and so on and so forth. Within that text is the answer to this question. And I'm going to read it for you. Application of the code in many situations is not controversial. However, there may be situations in which applying the code may raise more difficult issues. In particular, there may be circumstances in which terminology in the code is not clearly defined or in which two sections of the code may be in conflict. So there's your answer. So I think the key takeaway from this question is when you have a topic that is qualitative, right? It doesn't involve calculations or equations. You have to read up 
on that topic, number one, in the FE reference handbook ahead of the exam, but also in any other handbooks or guides that you can find so that you're knowledgeable on that topic, which will hopefully make it easier and faster for you to solve these types of questions on the exam, because the exam is going to have some qualitative components, not just equations and calculations. So there you have it. Our answer is D. Sections of the code are vague or conflict with other sections. I hope you found this week's video helpful. In upcoming videos, I will solve a strength of materials practice problem similar to one you might encounter on the FE exam. Pass the FE exam will publish videos weekly, so please be sure to click the subscribe button as you'll get expert tips and tricks, including practice problems weekly to ensure that you pass the FE exam. And please, I encourage you to ask questions in the comments below that I will read and respond to in future videos. Maybe there's a specific topic that you'd like me to cover or a problem that you're struggling to solve. Pass the FE exam will have you covered. I'll see you next week on Pass the FE exam.